welcome to the Notary News Channel. This is a forum for all things notary and some things not. Please be sure to like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications when the latest videos are posted. My name is Desiree Roman Rodriguez and I'm a subject matter expert in all things notary in the state of Illinois. I'm also an enrolled agent credentialed by the Internal Revenue Service to prepare taxes, troubleshoot tax issues, incorporate businesses, and work with taxpayers to resolve problems all the way up through the U.S. tax court. This week on the forum, we're going to be talking about the top five reasons why your refund in 2023 is lower than the one you received in 2022. The changes that were made to the tax credits that everyone received last year was temporary and it was temporary because of COVID. So the tax credits that were received in 2022 for tax year 2021 have reverted back to the 2019 guidelines that were implemented in 2018 with the Tax Cut and Job Act of 2017 that was passed by former President Trump. So the terrible refunds that taxpayers received in 2018 is going to be the same type of refunds you're going to be seeing this year in 2023. And this obviously is going to be for the income that you earned last year in 2022. So let's go over what those changes are. The first reason is going to be the adjustments made to the earned income credit. A lot of changes were done to the earned income credit for last year so that taxpayers could get back more income, more of a refund to help them through the pandemic. So those changes are now being reverted back to what it was before COVID. So the amount of an adjusted gross income was increased to a higher amount so more people could be eligible for the credit. This has now been reduced again so that the income threshold is lower, meaning less people will now qualify for the earned income credit. So for example, if you were an eligible taxpayer in 2021 and you didn't have any children and you made less than $21,430, you received roughly about $1,500 in earned income credit. But now for this year, you have to earn less than $16,480 in order to qualify for that earned income credit and the credit is only going to be $560. It's not going to be $1,500 like it was last year. Additionally, the age limits have reverted back to what it was before. Before it was you had to be a minimum of 25 years old and you could not be older than 65. So last year it was lowered down to age 19. So that means 19 to 24 year olds who were not full-time students were able to get earned income credit. That goes away this year. Now it's back to being a minimum of 25 years old. And then the same thing also applied for the cap. Last year, the cap was eliminated. It didn't matter if you were 65, 75, or 80 years old, if you were still working, if you qualified for earned income credit, you were eligible to receive it. For this year, it's going back down to the cap of you have to be under 65. So the year that you turned 65, if you turned 65 last year in 2022, you were no longer eligible for any earned income credit. And then the biggest change that allowed for a lot of people to get refunds last year were being able to use the income they earned in 2019. So if your income in 2019 was higher than the income you earned in 2021, you were able to use that income to uh, calculate the earned income credit and that gave taxpayers bigger refunds. This year, you're only able to use whatever income you earned in 2022 to calculate your earned income credit. And remember, unemployment, disability, or social security is not qualified income for earning the earned income credit. The second reason is going to be the changes to the child tax credits. So for the 2021 tax year, the child tax credits became fully refundable and increased from 2000 to 3000 and even up to 3600 if you had a dependent under the age of six. 
and the age of the dependent child was increased to include dependents that turned 17 years old, but not yet 18. This has now gone back to the pre-COVID limitations and the child tax credit is not a fully refundable tax credit. So let me explain. The maximum credit that you can get back per child for this tax year is going to be the $2,000. Now, in order for taxpayers to qualify for the full $2,000 is after you take your standard or your adjusted gross inc itemized deduction and your adjusted gross income taxes were owed, then the $2,000 would be used to reduce the taxes that you have to pay. So you would be able to use the whole full 2000. However, if after the standard or itemized deduction was applied to your adjusted gross income and you didn't owe any taxes, well then the most that you're going to be able to get back is $1,500. You don't get the whole 2000. And remember, it's no longer the 3000 or the 3600. It's now only going to be the 1500. So this is going to be a partial refund and it only applies to families that have earned at least $2,500 of income. So last year, if you earned less than $2,500, you were still eligible to receive the full $3,000 or $3,600 child tax credit. This year, that goes away. You have to have earned a minimum of $2,500 to qualify for any child tax credit. And then the other change for the child tax credit for this year is going to be last year, your dependent can be seven, up to 17 and including age 17, and they would have still received the $3,000. But for this year, if your dependent turned 17 in 2022, you no longer qualify for the $2,000 child tax credit. You're now only going to qualify for 500 because now it's going to be considered other dependent credit and no longer child tax credit. So now the third reason why you're seeing a lower refund this year is related to the child and dependent care credit. Now this year, the child and dependent care credit will return back to a maximum of $2,100 as opposed to being up to 8,000 that taxpayers received in 2022. So let me explain that. So for 2021 tax return, the cap on the daycare expenses that you would have paid what could was up to $8,000 for one child or $16,000 if you had two or more children. And you were able to write off up to 50% of those expenses, depending on how much you earned. So this meant that you potentially received the maximum credit of $4,000 for one child and $8,000 if you had two or more children and you had those daycare expenses. And the 2021 credit became refundable just for 2021, which meant that even if you didn't owe taxes, you got that daycare expense credit refunded to you, making you have a bigger refund. For 2022 tax income year, for this year's refunds, the credit goes back to being a non-refundable credit, and it goes back to just 3,000 for one child and 6,000 if you have two or more. So the maximum credit is now only gonna be 35% of your daycare expenses. And the more you earn, the lower the percentage is gonna be considered in determining the credit. And once your adjusted gross income is over 43,000, the maximum credit is gonna be 20%. And then again, it's not going to be a refundable credit. It's going to be whatever that, that credit is, it's to reduce the tax that you owe. So if you end up not owing any tax, you're not getting any cash back from that credit. The fourth reason why you are seeing lower refunds this year is for taxpayers who had COVID 401k and IRA distributions that they took in 2020. If you were one of the taxpayers who took advantage of the waiving of the tax penalty for withdrawing money out of your retirement account and in 2020, and you opted to spread that tax liability over three years, then you have to pay the final installment of those taxes out of your 2022 refund. So if you did an account to pay for the taxes 
on that third installment, then your refund is going to be reduced to take the tax to pay for that money that you took out in 2020. So depending on how much money you pulled out of your retirement fund and the taxes that you owe on it, you may even end up finding that you owe taxes this year instead of getting a refund at all. And the fifth and final reason why taxpayers are seeing lower refunds this year is because of those incorrect W-4 withholdings from paychecks. Taxpayers are still seeing small refunds, could likely be because the corrections to the W-4 were not made or they were filled out incorrectly. Now, many people collected unemployment during COVID and you may have forgotten the change that was made to the paychecks withholding of taxes by the IRS. They are taking less tax from you so that they have less of a refund to give back to you. So you want to make sure that according to the income that you're earning, according to whether you're married, according to whether or not one spouse works and one doesn't, you are filling out your W-4 form correctly. Now, I did do a video a few months ago on how to properly fill out your W-4 tax form. So if you have not looked at that video, you're going to want to go back and take a look at it and make sure that you are filling out your W-4 form correctly. Now, one of the th questions I've had this year so far is for taxpayers that have one spouse who is retired and collecting Social Security, but the other spouse is still married and they are filling out their W-4 form as married filing joint and then when they go to file their taxes, they want to file separately because if you file together with a spouse that's collecting Social Security, the Social Security is going to be taxable. So you don't want to file joint when one spouse works and one is collecting Social Security. That's the only situation where you want to file married filing separate. So, but if you put married filing joint on your W-4 form and now you're going to file separate from your spouse who's collecting Social Security, you have now kept too much money during the year and now you're going to have to pay that back because what, by filling out your W-4 form married joint, you told the IRS that you have a spouse that doesn't make any money at all and you're going to file jointly with your spouse. So that's how they took the taxes from you. Now you're coming to file separate and you, you did not have enough taxes withheld from your pay. So now you're going to find yourself short and have to pay taxes back. Now, if you are considering married filing separate, make sure that you consult with your tax professional to ensure that you still qualify for credits even though you're filing separate because the IRS does have penalties for certain credits that you would not be eligible to get if you are married and you file separate. So make sure you check with your tax professional to make sure that you are getting the tax credits that you should be getting and qualifying for them the way that you need to qualify for them. Okay, so that's going to be all that I have for this week. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the comments section below. As always, if you have any questions you'd rather not post in the comments section, you're always free to send an email to info at romanendeavors.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.